Google Giant Brass Balls coming up next. Hi, this is Bruce with BSVP Onsite here at SES Chicago with Greg Jarbo from SCOPR. Greg, there's a great conference here today, um, but in particular, YouTube has made some changes, especially since the last time we talked. Uh, what are some of the basics that someone who's just starting off with a company, a website or company Google Plus page should be doing with their YouTube channel? Well, first of all, they need to understand that um, having a YouTube channel now requires you to become a programmer. In the old days, it was all about, I need a video, and hopefully that video is a hit. It goes viral, and it gets a gazillion views. Well, not many people had a gazillion views. And uh, these days, it turns out that having one hit uh, isn't uh, really a model for success either. So let me give you the numbers. Um, and this, this actually comes from the, the CEO of YouTube. If you've got a really compelling video about, a, let's say, a dog on a skateboard, you can sell advertising next to that video at about $2 a CPM, you know, $2, two dollars a, a thousand. But if you've got a skateboard channel or a channel about dogs, you can sell advertising on that for $20 a CPM. So 10 times more. And the reason is, is because advertisers want predictability. They don't want to have to chase the last one hit wonder. They want to be able to say, you have an audience, it's interested in skateboards or it's interested in dogs, whatever it is. I have dog food or I have, you know, skateboards to sell, whatever it is that the product is. And I want to be able to advertise on, on a channel that has that audience uh, week in, week out, month in, month out. So all of a sudden, if you're interested in making a living on YouTube, and there are thousands of people who are making six-figure incomes a year, you've got to think like a programmer. What am I going to produce this week? What am I going to produce next week? What am I going to produ produce the week after? And because of all of that shift, what Google has done is given us the one channel. Now, there was a lot of gnashing of teeth when that happened because a lot of people who'd invested in creating, um, you know, brand channels that were customized lost all the customization. But what they gained in exchange was the fact that the new one channel is friendly on mobile devices. Mm -hmm. And that includes smartphones and tablets. And interestingly enough, we just got this factoid uh, two weeks ago, 40% of the videos viewed on YouTube are now viewed on mobile devices. So having a site that is friendly on a smartphone or a tablet is not a bad thing. You may, you may have lost a little of your customization effort, but boy, you picked up a big audience. So, but if you're, you're running a business, your business is producing widgets. How is that involved with monetizing your channel if you're trying to sell your own product as opposed to your, I guess, audience. station? Yeah, and so if you want to use your channel for marketing as opposed to selling ads next to your videos, it's the same thing. I don't want to reach 40% of the people who are going to watch videos uh, on a mobile device, no, I want to sell them widgets too. So one way or another, despite the fact that it m meant that people had to make changes, uh, taking advantage of this uh, new channel and some of the new features that they've offered is important whether you're uh, using the channel for marketing and you want to drive traffic to your website or you're using uh, YouTube uh, to monetize those videos and you're trying to make a career as a y YouTube content creator. So what's the best content? It, it turns out funny is still number one. I, the, the new data has just come in from the Pew Charitable Trust, so it's from a neutral third party. And uh, I'm sorry, comedy is still king. Uh, number two though, and this is new data, this has sort of jumped off the, the chart in the last couple of years, is how-to videos. And uh, it's really hard to be funny. So not everyone can actually pursue that as a genre of uh, content for whatever they're trying to do, whether it's marketing or make a living. But how-to, all of us can do how-to videos. And it's, it's really surprising how much people now turn to YouTube when they have a how-to question they want to answer. After you've watched this video, Google giant brass balls. Giant brass balls. Yeah, this was a. Um, if you uh, Google giant brass balls, you'll discover that an article that I wrote for Search Engine Watch ranks number one. And 
what the article was about was there was an effort afoot to try to get Stephen Colbert to rank number one for giant brass balls, and I wrote about it. And uh, part of this was to demonstrate that although Google said Google bombing didn't work anymore, we thought that it still could, and it did. But as soon as we presented that data at SES Toronto, Google <coughs> did what they do. And uh, ironically, I now rank for the term that we were trying to get Stephen Colbert to rank for. So um, obviously, some of the engineers at Google have a sense of humor. I don't think Stephen even ranks for that at all. No, but I do. So it's an uh, interesting party of trivia that you can pick up. And so basically, to get ranked number one, create a good blog, create a good video that is long-tailed and specific. Yeah, and, and, and embarrass the hell out of Google for at least a week or two. Uh, and then, you know, guess what? They, um, they have ways of uh, changing their algorithm from time to time. And um, Lord knows how I ended up number one. How can we find more about Greg Jarbo? Lord, he's um, a rash on the Internet. So uh, you can do a search. You know, yeah, right. Um, you can find me uh, at, at our website, seo-pr.com. Uh, you can find that I write articles for Search Engine Watch and Real SEO. You could read one of my books. Um, one of them is YouTube and Video Marketing an Hour a Day. Uh, that was published two years ago. And so I recommend you don't read it because, trust me, YouTube has changed so much in the last two years. Of the 11 chapters in the book, seven of them are out of date. So don't read that book. But the new one that is just out last month, so it's only 4% out of date. Uh, is strategic digital marketing. Uh, I've written a chapter in that uh, book along with a whole lot of the other faculty at uh, Rutgers um, who uh, teach in the digital marketing program. So you can find me there. You can find me at SES conferences. Thanks. Thank you. This is Bruce Himmelblau with BSVP on site.